Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel and you can see by Dave's massive smile or grin on his face his new clubs have finally arrived so his Tacoma 101 T irons that we spoke about last week have touched down and we're going to talk through today what setup Dave has gone for, why he's chosen those he's also got some more clubs coming which I didn't realise but they have not got here as of yet so they should be here hopefully in the next week or so so we're going to talk straight away through Dave's set, which I'm going to put on screen now for you. And what you'll see is that we've got four iron to pitching wedge. Correct. So Dave, we know from your previous set, and if you have been watching the series over the years, guys, with Dave, is that he has been, his highest club is a six iron. So a six iron was the highest club he had in his DCB, and then after that, it wasn't his favourite club. So Dave's that no. eager, he's getting into the box. He's I am, I am. More so, excited, Chris. Yeah, so Dave's gone for a four and five iron, and we're going yep. to show you why today that Dave has gone for the four iron and why he didn't have a four and five iron in his Callaways. Um, well, reason being that I couldn't really get them on off, off the floor, whereas yeah. when I had to go with the ones that you had, they were, they were flying higher and now getting a, a good bit of carry with them. Yeah, so with the, like we said, the hollow bodies, these are actually a little bit weaker lofts than Dave, so we are getting a little bit more launch out of them. The ball flight straight away we saw last week was higher. Yep. Uh, and we're going to show you that today. So let's have a look at the irons and let's have a look at the setup Dave's gone for. So first hit, Dave, you've gone for the pitching wedge, so we know that's your highest lofted club in the bag. Ooh. Straight away, good feel, as you know. Oh, aye. Yeah? Nothing finer than a new set of golf clubs, is the day. No. So, like we mentioned, we now need to think about with Dave is obviously he's gone four round. We know he had a five hybrid and yep. a four hybrid, and we was even looking at a six hybrid. But now, after performing well with a six iron, Dave was kind of thinking, well, the longer irons we then luckily tried because I did have them and he liked those. We're now looking at the bottom end of the bag, and Dave is telling me he has bought some more clubs, which are the Sky Forger wedges, which are on screen now. So. Also to Como, again, Dave's gone price. Bargain. He has seen them as well. He has luckily, yeah. he has tried them, but value for money. That's what Dave's gone for. So it'll be very interesting when those come in, in the next couple of weeks is we're going to get them and test them against your Vokies, against your Jaws wedges and start to see numbers wise how they perform for Dave. But it's then very important to get the right setup at the bottom end of your bag. So. Yeah. It's matching in with these lofts. We know that this pitching wedge is 46 degrees. Dave's previous pitching wedge was 44. Yep. So very strong. So now Dave might not need a 48. He might need to go something like a 50 or a 52. And that's what we're going to look at when we talk wedges. It's then having all the good options at the bottom end of the bag because now we've kind of tidied it up at the top end of the bag. We've still got the option for hybrids. If Dave wants yeah. to go to hybrids, he's still got his hybrids, but it saved him some money on buying those. So Dave's going to hit a couple more with his pitching wedge, and then we're going to get to the four iron. And we're going to put some numbers on screen, guys, of this four iron. So if we talk about the loft here in comparison to Dave's DCB four iron, again, not as strong which is the thing, the theme that we've gone for with these. A lot of people instantly think distance and they think, right, I have to get stronger lofts, I have to get something that's going to go further. But Dave was losing too much height on his ball fight. He was losing yeah. shots from Dave hitting greens, but then running through the back because he was coming in with such little landing angle. But you'll see even with a four iron, we're getting a reasonable flight and a consistent flight, which is the main thing we're looking at. You'll see in coming weeks as well, guys, we're going to be out on the golf course. We're going to be actually testing these out around waterfront. So taking it away from Dave's course for a little while until we go back there in the summer. But we're going to play nine holes here and film with Dave with his new irons and see, obviously, if we've got different clubs in than we've had yeah. in previously. How they fit in. Does he use these irons more off the tee on a couple of holes? Again, on the par threes, is he hitting less club? And more importantly, what can he score? Is it helping him improve? Is it in helping him score? Hope so, Chris. Hope score so. better, because that's what we want from these golf clubs. So, let's go to the four iron now. So, first looks for Dave. It's the first time he's had a four iron in his hands for a long time. It's very true. Straight up wow. the middle there. Great strike. And we're talking about Dave's four hybrid on average from his Arcos system because he does track, it, uh, does track his stats even. He was saying the total of 186 was his average shot with that club. So we want to see what this is doing in regards to that and see how it is playable. So we want to think about obviously how that's launching and we also want to think about what it is carrying because carry is a big thing when it comes to these clubs. 
And those are two straight up the middle. And we take those all day, Dave. I will, yeah. Bob on then. Bob on, York's turn. So shafts has been a big thing that we've talked about with Dave over the weeks and over the winter. And we have gone for the KBS Tor Light regular shaft. So they'll be on the screen now. They're looking at 105 grams, and that's a fantastic shot from Dave. Bullets again up the middle, but a nice height to it, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. What you'd expect from a four iron? Well, yeah, but it's probably actually a little bit higher than I'd expect. Okay. You know, yeah. I've always they've been really too low, whereas that's kind of the height that I've been hitting the six iron when I've hit it properly yeah. with my DCBs. Yeah. Perfect. So it's a good sight for Dave. He likes to see that. It's a little bit different. It's again why he's gone to these golf clubs is to try and generate that and get a little bit more landing angle because that's going to help us get down to the single figures so not dave's best strike bad there, one but, but you know as a mid handicap golf that's the first one so that's uh, not too bad for dave yeah. so we're going to go on the golf course in the f future weeks and test this against the hybrids that dave has the same with the five iron and the same with the, the six and start to see which one is going to be the most consistent. So we want to think about hitting into a par three. First of all, what are our expectations as a mid handicap golfer? So are we expecting it inside 10 feet every time from 150 <laughs> yards? No. Dave says no, but most of the people behind the screen will be saying yes. No. So we want to see which one dispersion wise is the best, which one front to back is the best as well. Cause that's one thing that's overlooked is everybody thinks about side to side dispersion, but we want to think front to back. So front to back is the furthest one, obviously going 180 and the shortest one going 120. 60 yards is a big gap that we don't want. We want no. that to be something in the realms of maybe 10 yards. Yeah. 10 yards either way, you can then be consistent and we can start to lower your handicaps when we know we can trust the club we've got in our hands. Yeah, nice Good one to there, finish Dave. with. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at those numbers. So we would have never thought it on the channel from all the years that this could be a club that Dave would put back into the his bag. golf bags, did we Dave? No, we didn't, that's true. And Dave's been very happy with that. So strike wise, yes, there was a few miss hits, but the average is now on the screen. As you can see that we was getting over 150 yards carry, getting to that 180 number. So very similar to yeah. the hybrid. And like I said, incoming weeks, we're going to get the hybrid in here, test the numbers, start to see which one's carrying further. Dave might not put this four iron in the bag all the time, no, depending that's true. on what goal. If I'm club. playing, you know, I'm playing somewhere dry, then yeah, if if it's if it's a bit damp and I want a total carry, then yeah, possibly not. And there's a few holes at Garforth when we go back through the course management in the summer where this might be more beneficial, yeah. the hybrid might be more beneficial. This is where for Dave we start to talk about getting down to single figures. Yeah. It's about having the right tools to be able to play. Dave's playing a few more different golf courses this year. He's going to play a little bit of Lynx golf. Well, he's going to play everywhere, here, there, yeah. and everywhere. Celtic Manor for one. Celtic Manor for one. Even though it's not Lynx course, it's... Yeah, and we're going to try and do a few more golf courses, try and get onto Lynx golf courses and show you what kind of setup you would need when you go there. Again, regarding Dave's wedges, which wedges would be more beneficial yeah. around there? What kind of bounce do we need? What would Dave need to change and around in certain shots? How we would like to play that? So hopefully you're enjoying this series. It is the start of this, Dave's new irons, Dave's new clubs in general. But comment below, what do you want to see with these irons? We know we saw a lot last week of what you want us to compare it against. I have got a couple of irons for us to compare to, more straight to consumer as yeah. well. Uh, and from there, we're still going to be, the search for Dave's driver goes on. You'll see in the next couple of days, we have got the PXG driver and the Torres drivers, which are actually behind us and we're going to be testing shortly. We're also going to get out on the golf course and test those on the course. Similar price to last week's Innesis 900. Yeah. Um, but you can actually get a better fit to it, yeah. certainly with the PHG. So guys, mm. hopefully you've enjoyed that, and we will see you again tomorrow. See you soon.